Hi everyone. Welcome to the seventh lecture of the series on sliding mode control. In this lecture, we will be discussing about twisting controller, which is a second order sliding mode control approach. Here is the overview. We start with the basic concept of the twisting controller and its derivation. Then we move on to the simulation of the twisting controller with some examples. Twisting controller comes under the category of higher order sliding mode control and it is basically a second order SMC approach. And in general, we can apply twisting controller to the nonlinear systems of the form as in equation number one. And we select the sliding variable as in equation number two, which is chosen as the output error. Let the control input u appears in the second derivative of the sliding variable s. Then we can write s double dot as in equation number three, where a and b are assumed to be bounded. Now in twisting controller, the control law is chosen as in equation number four, where R1 and R2 are positive scalars, which are the switching gains. Here the signum of S gives a value of plus one if S is positive and minus one if S is negative. And similarly, signum of S dot will give us a value of plus one if S dot is positive and minus one if S dot is negative. Therefore, based on the sign of S and S dot, the control input u can take four different values such as minus r1 minus r2 minus r1 plus r2 plus r1 plus r2 plus r1 minus r2 to illustrate this in more detail we can consider the sliding variable dynamics as in equation number five in which we have considered the time a as zero and b as one which results in a double integrated dynamics now based on the sign of s and s dot the twisting controller has four different possibilities as listed here in the first quadrant we have both s and s dot are positive therefore both signum of s and signum of s dot will be plus one which gives u is equal to minus r1 minus r2 similarly in the second quadrant we have s is negative whereas s dot is positive which gives u is equal to r1 minus r2 and in the third quadrant both s and s dot are negative which gives u is equal to r1 plus r2. And in the fourth quadrant, we have s is positive and s dot is negative, which gives u is equal to minus r1 plus r2. Therefore, the control input can be either plus or minus r1 plus r2 or plus or minus r1 minus r2. Here, these values corresponding to the first and third quadrants, and these corresponding to the second and fourth quadrant. And we can see that the second and fourth quadrants result in a reduced gain, which is r1 minus r2. And this makes the trajectory converging in the case of twisting controller. From the bouncing ball example in the previous lecture, we observed that in the case of double integrator with a negative input, the state trajectory will be a parabola like this. And similarly, we can show that for the double integrator with a positive input, the state trajectory will be a parabola like this. Here we are considering the s versus s dot plot with the s double dot greater than zero and s double dot less than zero. So this is equivalent to a double integrator with a negative input and this is equivalent to a double integrator with a positive input. And in the case of twisting controller, we have four different values of the input among which two are negative values and two are positive values. We have seen that in the case of twisting controller, we will be using reduced gain in the case of second and fourth quadrant. In this figure, the curve C1 is corresponding to the switching gain R1 plus R2 and the curve C2 is corresponding to the switching gain R1 minus R2. So basically, if the switching gain decreases, this parabola becomes more narrower. Now, the state trajectory will follow the curve C1 in the first and third quadrants and it follows C2 in the second and fourth quadrants. So therefore, in the case of twisting controller, it follows the curve C1 in the first quadrant then it follows the curve C2 in the second quadrant. So here the gain is reduced, so it will be converging. And it again follows the curve C1 in the third quadrant, then follows the curve C2 in the fourth quadrant. So it will be again converging. Here by converging, we means that this length SM dot will be smaller than the length S0 dot, which will follow in the subsequent switchings. Here this curve in this bold font, we call it as the measuring curve, which is basically the bounding trajectory corresponding to the bound of uncertainties and sliding trajectory will be always stays within this measuring curve. Now for ensuring stability, we have to prove that this measuring curve is converging to origin. 
in the case of bounded uncertainty, we can use the differential inclusion for bounding S double dot. And in the first quadrant, we have S and S dot greater than zero. Therefore, the control input U is equal to minus of R1 plus R2. So this will give S double dot as in equation number six. Here we can observe that in the first quadrant, the major end curve will be decided by the maximum value of S double dot. And from this equation six, we have this maximum value occurs when this term is maximum and this term is minimum. That gives S double dot as plus C minus K1 into R1 plus R2. Now by multiplying both sides by 2S dot and integrating, we get equation 8. Here if we substitute the condition S equal to SM at S dot equal to 0, it gives the constant C0 like this. And by substituting this in here, we obtain the solution as in equation number 9. Now in the fourth quadrant, we have S is greater than 0 and S dot is less than 0 and the state trajectories will be bounded by the minimum value of S double dot. This gives S double dot as in equation number 10 and following us before we can integrate this equation and obtain the solution as in equation number 11. Now in the first quadrant, when S equal to 0, we have S dot equal to S 0 dot and substituting this in equation number 9 gives S 0 dot square as in equation number 12. And in the fourth quadrant, when S equal to 0, we have S dot equal to S1 dot. And substituting this in equation number 11 gives S1 dot square as in equation number 13. Now, if we take the ratio of S1 dot by S0 dot, it, we obtain equation number 14. Now, for a converging trajectory, we require the magnitude of SI plus 1 dot divided by SI dot should be strictly less than 1. And we define the magnitude of SI plus 1 dot by SI dot as Q. And for a converging trajectory, we require Q is strictly less than 1. From that, we can write this should be strictly less than 1. And this square should also be less than 1, which can be rewritten as in equation number 16. And it gives the condition for stability in the case of twisting controller. Next, we consider the simulation of twisting controller. And for that, we consider a simple pendulum system as given in equation number 17. And the sliding variable is chosen as the output error, which is equal to r minus x1 where r is the output reference and the twisting controller is defined as in equation number 18 where the switching gains are chosen as 15 and 5. Now in order to implement the switching controller we require the estimate of s dot and for finding the estimate we use a sliding mode differentiator as in equation number 19 and the simulation parameters are chosen as in equation number 20. This figure shows the plot of s versus s dot in the case of twisting controller. And here we can see that the plot starts from some non zero value and it will eventually converge to origin, which means that both S and S dot become zero in the case of twisting controller. This plot shows the response of the symbol pendulum with the twisting controller. This first plot shows the plot of X1 and X1 reference. And here we can see that the state X1 is following the reference trajectory. And this plot is corresponding to the plot of sliding variable. And from here we can observe that the sliding variable is converging to zero, which means that the output error is converging to zero. And this plot is the estimation of S dot. Finally, here we can see the plot of the control signal, in which we can observe that the control signal is switching between four different values, which are plus 20, plus 10, minus 10, and minus 20. The MATLAB codes for this simulation can be downloaded from the link given in the description. That completes this lecture. Thanks for listening.